everybody. It's Kate Richberg, and welcome to the Saturday edition of the Great Beat Extravaganza Midwinter Market Edition. Holy smokes, there are so many people here um, hanging out with me. I can see all you all, and I am on so many social media outlets. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, we are on all of the great beat extrava extravaganza outlets, including the page in the group. A big shout out to all of our friends who are watching on beadshop.com, all of our social outlets. And I am over on my Kate Richburg Jewelry Educator page and Kate Richburg YouTube channel as well. So kids, we are in for a wild ride today because there's a wild ride right outside my door. I wonder if I can show you while people are really jumping on here. Let me just show you. Let me show you, because as you know, I'm in California, right? I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't see it, but it's raining like crazy here in the Central Valley. So we're going to cozy up and whoop it up in my hour. So I only have an hour, so I better not dally. I'm used to like, you know, an hour and a half of chitty chat and stuff. So if you're watching this on replay, folks, uh, welcome and thanks again uh, for watching this replay. We really, really appreciate it. And we always appreciate you supporting not only us here at beadshop.com, but all of our friends from all over the bead world. So cheers to you in my tiny uh, little espresso. And yeah, jump on. And if you're seeing a black screen or if you haven't refreshed, go ahead and refresh that page. If you do get any uh, glitches or things like that here uh, on the broadcast, hit refresh. I bet uh, it'll come back right up, okay? So let me start with a couple of things and then we're gonna jump right on in, all right? So uh, let's first talk about about here we are all the social where you can find us follow me at beadshop.com on our insta at the bead table join our facebook group would you we have so many great people over there um helping and posting and uh it's a, a lot of fun we're almost eight thousand members strong over there so we'd love to have you join us also you can hit that like subscribe and follow button over on beadshop.com and you can find me my personal Insta at BeadKate, where I'm up to all kinds of crafty activities, including beads and metalwork and stitching and knitting and all things fiber world related. You know, I like to call myself an Omnicrafter, hashtag Omnicrafter. Uh, you can hit that like and subscribe button over at Kate Richburg on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to join me on the Facebook world, uh, jump over and join my group, Create with Kate Richburg, and my page as well. So that being said, everybody, let me do this. You can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Um, you can uh, sign up for our newsletter over at beadshop.com to get all of the latest that we have going on. You know, I know um, a few of you, let me see if I can get this comment, this card off the screen. There you go. I know a few of you, uh, I, I've heard from you um, in our messages and stuff like that, that you were super disappointed about how fast the kits sold out. Okay. So, um, I'm sorry. You know, we're just a small little group here at Bead Shop. So when we make kits, there's, um, you know, I have limited resources. I have limited beads. I have <laughs> limited resources to put them together. So I'm sorry, sorry, sorry um, if you've missed it 
um, and didn't get a, a, a chance to grab a kit. But if you go to the homepage over at Bead Shop, what Drea did this morning, she jumped on last night, we had a quick convo, and she uh, put together a really great list of new of uh, stuff for you to find um, to create your own Feather River project. So find the Feather River, Feather River project kit on our website. You can find it right uh, here at beadshop.com collections feather read. So you'll be able to uh, see that. And this is the project that we are going to be doing today. Let me take all of this stuff off for the moment. And this stuff off. I've got, I need like a, like a production assistant here. There we go. Um, we're going to work on this feather feather reed I keep calling it feather river i don't know the feather project uh we're going to be playing around with that today okay and the techniques that i'm going to be sharing with you today uh we're going to create a balanced design for your wrap bracelet we're going to choose the best thread for your project we're going to perfect the infinity stitch for your wrap I'm going to show you my favorite decorative knot for wrap bracelets. We're going to end and add thread in the middle of the project, and we are going to measure and close the bracelet. Gosh, it seems like a lot, so I better get cracking, right? So uh, let me just pull this up real quick here. I think there we are. And let's get this show on the road. There I am. Um, and thanks again, folks, for all of you jumping in and saying hello. I really, really um, appreciate um, uh, you guys, uh, all you folks supporting us. And again, I'm sorry about the kit. I know I see it in the comments and I'm going to try not to see it. If I could make an unlimited amount of kits, I would. But Folks, more kits are always coming down the pike. I've got some beads right over there that are going to be turned into a kit soon. So um, I promise it's coming. And Lenny, I love that you love the Omnicrafter tag. Yes. People say pick one craft. I say why? And I agree with you. That's right. So uh, let's, um, let's jump in. Let me get my demo camera up here and let's oh and thanks for the earring love let me put the earrings down here folks so you can see it um let me take both of these i did a broadcast on these i just you know what it's a saturday show i get totally distracted i know you want to see a wrap bracelet um but i did a, a broadcast I didn't see the other earring. I had it here. Uh, it was a few weeks ago. Um, and I did, uh, I think it was a free tip Friday when I did an earring, kind of a free form earring. And the, the earring that I made was based on that one. I'm looking for the sample here, but I don't see it. Anyway, uh, look at our free tip Friday a few weeks back and you'll see this. This of course is made with soft flex right here it's really fantastic so um i love using soft flex for earrings so um yeah so those are those guys you can find those all right so let's uh oh and gita bless you i bet that's gita i can't see who it is that's doing that posting but i bet it's you <laughs> you can find it right there. So yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, okay. Let's get to this. Um, let's take a look at the wrap that I did. Okay. This one, as I said, it's called feather reed. And so the design that I did, you may have remembered this and you've seen me talk about this before. Okay. Um, this is a project, uh, that I called legend based on legend of legends of the fall, the big Montana skies. I did this a few weeks ago as well. 
Um, and I was really digging this colorway. Okay. So when I thought about doing this project, um, my starting point for this, let me dump out the kit here, not dump, but let me gently lay out the kit, shall I say, right? This was the bead. These really delicious um, African glass beads. They're a sand cast bead. And aren't they just exquisite? These were um, kit exclusives. But a little bird told me, and I'm that little bird, that I'm going to be having an African bead uh, flash sale Friday coming up this Friday, whatever Friday's date is. Let me pull that up real quick on the 20th of January, if you're watching this live or before the 20th. Um, I have some really luscious beads that our African trader uh, uh, that I got from him. He was just here a few weeks ago. But this was my starting point, okay? This right here. And so when I was casting around for inspiration. I went and I looked for photos that, and if you know kind of how we work around here at Bead Shop, we use photos a lot for inspiration. And you can see I'm kind of pushing it over here to the side. Drea and I were chatting and we were saying, you know, and here's the feather reed grass right here. And she was like, look up photos that evoke prairie to you, Kate, or like, you know, Montana and outdoorsy and stuff. And so this is the photo that I saw, right? This is a feather reed grass. It's a prairie grass here in the US. And I was like, that's it. Look at that blade of grass that's right here along the right hand edge. That is this color right here, right? And then it all, it all fell into place. Okay. So it was pretty, uh, it, it pretty much just gelled from there. Okay. Um, so I have this bead here that I started with and then I thought, well, it's a big bead, right? So I need another big bead. So I jumped in with this Java glass and I thought these two beads will balance each other out nicely in this, in this design, right? I wanted something a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit smaller. I wanted a light color and a dark color. So then I put that aside. And then I thought, okay, I want light. I want unevenness. I already had this, right, as kind of uneven-ish, right? But I wanted something smaller that still had that pebbly look, right? So I chose these beads direct from our African trader, these beautiful Padres, and you got a whole strand in that kit. They're strung on this, right? Uh, these beads here, let me, let me talk about the bead sizes. Those Padres are about the size of a six aught right? So that six aught, I love a six aught for um, a wrap. I, I love that it's big, but not too big, not too small. Um, and it's great. Okay. So, um, so these three came together. Okay. Then I had these burning a hole in my back bead pocket. Okay. And I thought these are all kind of the same shape, right? They're all kind of round-ish, right? So what I did was I found some wood beads and the bicone, I posted a little uh, prompt in the Great Bead Extravaganza group earlier today. And I asked what your favorite bead was, right? Um, and many of you answered, a lot of you answered wood beads, which makes my heart super glad. These are wood, they're um, 
their bicones. Bicone is one of my favorite wood or bead shapes, really. I love um, a bicone. I feel like when you use different um, different sizes and shapes in your project, not only are you looking at the shape that the bead creates, right? But you're looking at the shape around it, the negative space that the bead creates. So can you see here's the, the wood bicone and here is the next bead I tossed in, okay? This is, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that on our website, we have beads called shadows. And these are the natural brass shadows. These are the little shadows right here. And again, I'm sorry, the kit is sold out, but you can find the project right over at beadshop.com. Go to collections, go to Feather Read, and we've put together kind of a curated list of what we've got. If anything sells out, folks, put yourself on the notification list, okay? And when we get it back in stock, you're going to get um, an email as soon as it comes back in, all right? took a, a bracing uh, drink of my espresso and we're going to continue with this. Okay. So here, this is that you're in the kit. You got a, a strand of these uh, complete with long cotton string and all. Uh, I love the burnished color of this brass. I also love that it's about the same size as these a dots and this um these check glass that i have here so my final contribution not my final almost my final were this little uh bag of beads here that i curated for you i love it i don't know who this is that's commenting did we used to have a shop in palo alto california yes we did the bead shop on hamilton avenue we opened in 1982 and i came on board in uh 1992 so uh i've just passed my 30th year of this bead this bead love right uh, so this here, uh, I did a little mix of a dots, right? So I did an a dot in a light blue, an a dot kind of in a yellow, and then I mixed in some check glass at three millimeter. These little folks, also those little shadows, are all um, uh, are all. Uh, a good mix together. So, and there's no wait list, Robin. I know I've seen your comments. You've made me feel so bad, but there isn't a wait list for the kit because I literally cannot get these beads. I can't get them anymore. Um, I'll keep on the lookout, but um, maybe, maybe, but I, I'm doubtful. Um, but just about everything else that is uh, in our regular rotation, um, you can uh, jump on that wait list for. So I'm sorry, but follow our newsletter and you'll be first in line for my next kit. I promise. Um, so this was the color palette. Okay. This is what I've got, what I had. And so then I found a leather that worked for me. I used a, used a distressed light Brown and I chose a thread now let's morph into choosing thread folks here, right? For a wrap. What I wanted for this, okay, was I wanted you to see, you can see that here. I wanted you to see the stitching. I wanted the, the stitching to be forward in the design. So I chose KO number one, because it was a nice dark contrast in dark brown. I chose that here, right, to kind of show the contrasting stitches. And I chose KO because it's a skinny thread and I wanted to infinity stitch, right? Now you're asking, well, Kate, why? Why infinity stitch, right? I'll tell you. And someone mentioned it earlier. In the, in the project. And Gita, thank you. We've got a whole bunch of KO. 
in our on our website. Lots of beautiful colors. Um, someone mentioned earlier about laddering. They were laddering and they felt like the thread was a little thin, et cetera, et cetera. If I had chosen something like this Ceylon, which I, I like using, right? When we do traditional laddering. And if you go to beadshop.com, you'll see we've got so much learning on there. We talk about laddering with regular Ceylon. I also macrame with it a lot. And in this um, legend sample, you can see I've used the Ceylon here for macrame. You can see it here as well. I've doubled it up here. But if I'm doing, let me get a quick piece of paper here. This is one that I was, when Emily and I were on the other day, I was writing notes to her and I'm like, I can't see you. So that's what this is from. But traditional laddering, right? Here's your ladder bracelet. There's your, there's your, your leather, right? And here's your bead. There's your bead hole. And you're coming from both sides, from the left and the right through your bead, right? Coming through and coming through, right? So your, your thread is coming from the left and from the right going through. So it's a doubled thread here, but you're taking it from the left to the right and it's two separate threads. Okay. Uh, we have a great tricks to ladder and Gita. You read my flipping mind. I love it. We've got a great PDF on tricks to laddering over at beadshop.com that talks about this very self same thing. Go download it. It's free. Add it to your resources. Um, I think you'll refer to it again and again and again. Okay. So this is traditional laddering from the, the, whoops, I'm looking at this backwards from the right. That's your right hand, Kate and the left, right? Crossing, coming under, putting your next bead on crossing. So you're making an X with this. With infinity stitch, folks, what you're doing is here's my thread or my, my leather. There's my bead. And I'm coming from the left with my doubled strand that's on a needle, right? And I'm coming through the bead. I am turning the corner back under. I'm actually coming under the leather and then turning the corner and going back over. You'll see me do that. Back through the bead and around. So instead of making an X like I'm doing here with this thread, here I'm making an infinity symbol with my thread, if that makes sense. Okay. And I'm going to show you that. I use this with the skinny thread also because I have so many different sizes of beads here. Okay. If I were laddering, let's say with all of this, the sand cast, right? That has the large holes, right? I might just do the traditional laddering with this Ceylon. Let me get my snips here because, right? I know. Show how my mom is saying, show how my left hand makes an L. That's my L. That's my left. Thanks, Ma. Always coming to the rescue, right? I can test this thread out and I can say, yes, this is regular Ceylon. And if I cross it here like this, right, in a traditional laddering way, this would work, right? But I have little beads. I have medium-sized beads. I have large beads. So to me, doing that infinity stitch laddering makes it a lot easier because I'm using a needle. All right. So let me show you how we set that up. Let me make sure I'm on track with my, um, 
with my agenda here. So let's perfect the infinity stitch with that cord. Let me get all of this uh, to the side. And uh, I'm going to pop back to that infinity stitch in just a second. Let me prep this. Let me show you how I did this here. You can see I've gotten my button. In your kit, you get three yards of the 1.5 millimeter leather that I've got here. That 1.5 millimeter leather, I think, is perfect for this project. You could pop up to two and down to one millimeter, but the 1.5 for me really, uh, really is what my favorite is, okay? And you can see how I've started, and you can see in this sample, let me scoot this over. Let me zoom out a little bit here. In the sample, that's a little too far zoomed. There we go. How I've used that knot, that snake knot here at the end and one in the center to add a bit of texture a bit of contrast, right? You can find all of the leather right there at that um, at that link on bead shop. I'm gonna get uh, a bit of KO that's a little um, lighter in color for me to do this with. This is the brown here. I'm gonna use this green. It might show up a little, eh, it doesn't actually. I'm gonna stick with the brown. So it's a good idea, but not going to happen. So let me show you how I do this. Over on Bead Shop, I do have a, a standalone tutorial. So I'm only going to show you this uh, just real quick because I don't have unlimited time here. So I've got to stick with my time schedule. But um, let me show you. And the snake knot tutorial is right there. Find it on YouTube. Or you can also go to our website at beadshop.com, go under learning and go to the knot pendium. And I have a whole bunch of my favorite knots there, this being one of them. So uh, the snake knot. So let me just show you here real quick. I have tied my, this would be three yards, not the short little bit I have here. I've tied, I've gone through my button, this honeycomb button. And I've just tied an overhand knot, made a loop, leave the, put the strands through, tighten it up. Kathleen, you can always watch this rebroadcast right on our website or the YouTube channel. It's going to live there in perpetuity. So don't worry if you have to bow out, it'll be there for you. Okay. So what you're going to do here is here's my right hand strand. Here's my left hand strand. I'm going to make a loop with my right hand strand. The left hand strand comes up through the loop. Now, all we do is cast it over this strand, under the two strands here under the button, and up again through that loop. Now see how it looks like a little pretzel almost? I'm gonna come and tighten, 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 and walk it up. Okay, just like this. Do it one more time. Loop from the right, up through the loop with the left. I switch hands. I bring this leather over, under, behind the button and the, the two strands here, and up through that loop, and tighten. And make these knots wherever, right? Wherever, whenever. I really think adding kind of this unified knot in here helps to bring 
this design together. Okay, so now let's add our thread into this and let's talk about the infinity stitch. Okay, so once you've made here, I want this one, once you've made as many knots as you want, okay, you're going to grab your thread. Now, to wax or not to wax, that is the question. I'm going to be completely candid and honest with you folks. When I can find my beeswax, I'll wax. When I can't find my beeswax, I won't. I mean, that's just the God's honest truth right there. I, I like to wax my thread, but I don't like a ton of wax getting all over everything. So I'm just going to do a short piece here. Okay. And I'm going to use my board. I'm going to take this out of focus for a second. Uh, that's about a foot. That's about two feet. You can't see me measuring. That's about three feet. That's what I'm going to use for this demo. For the first part of my section, when I was making the actual bracelet, I reeled off about two yards, folded it in half, you know, threaded my needle, found the center point. So I was working with a yard of thread because of this, we, um, I used this doubled. Okay. So I'm going to wax since I did find my beeswax here. And I agree. I like just a light coating of wax. I feel like my thread is perhaps a little more manageable that way. And I'm using KO today. All right. Any skinny thread will work for you, but I am choosing the KO because I like the colors. I like this size of KO. This is the 330 text that we carry here at Bead Shop, um, and it's strong. I like it, okay? You could use Fireline, but I don't love Fireline as much for laddering. I keep my Fireline for um, bead weaving and not all bead weaving. This is a little bit out of my focal range, so bear with me as I turn the thread and I needle the thread rather than threading the needle. If you need to, if you're having a little bit of trouble getting that needle in there, give it a little bit of an angle cut as you go. And place the eye of the needle on that thread. Easier said than done. I think it's because I've got a little bit of wax in that needle eye. Let me get a fresh one. The needle size I'm using is a size 10 sharp. Nothing like 500 people out there watching me try to thread a needle. So thanks for bearing with me on that. There we go. Needle that thread. Okay. Uh, Nymo will work. You know, I am not a thread. What I want to say, I don't think there's any hard, fast rules around thread, right? The hard, fast rule is you, um, what do I want to say? You testing what you love and sticking what with what you love. I love KO. I use Nymo. I use Nymo from way back in the day. I don't love it quite as much. Um, I don't love Fireline for laddering because it's a little too stiff. I do traditional laddering if my bead holes are long enough with Ceylon. Um, right. So just, just decide what you like, you know, do a, do some testers and see what works for you. Okay. And yes, as I always say, as Gita is telling me, you do you. Right. So now the snake knot has another purpose here. Okay. This is also going to help me hide my thread. Okay. So what I do here, I'm going to get a little tighter. And with my snake knot, I'm going to come in with my needle. This is a size 10 sharp. You could use a beading needle if you wanted. Again, whatever needle you like. I like a rigid needle for this. So I'm going to pull this through. And I'm just going to weave my thread in that knot 
right? I'm going to put my finger here so when I pull this through, you can slide it in. We have a really good knot ref or, um, thread reference over on Bead Shop. We've got a needle reference. We've got a knot reference. We've got a thread reference. It's called the Stitchinary. We need to update it because we've gotten some new threads since. But you can go and download the Stitchinary. But Tricks to Laddering talks a lot about um, thread as well. But the Stitchinary is going to be a really good um, a really good resource for you. So see what I've done here? Let me zoom in tight, 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 tight. See how I've used that knot as a receptacle to kind of weave my thread in right here for the start? So now, whoops, it got caught on something. I'm just going to send it through. And if I pull on that thread, can you see that? The ends aren't going anywhere. I could uh, add a little bit of glue or something here. I could knot this around the end, but I've woven it enough that it's going to catch. Okay, so I'm going to come in and I'm going to clip it away. Okay, uh, this uh, thread is comparable to like a Nymo size D. It's about the same size as a four pound fire line, right? Kind of, kind of small, small ish, right? Uh, I like a size 10 sharp. Uh, you know, we talk about needles here all the time. A sharp, just real quick, is a little shorter than a regular beading needle. So I can wield this a little bit better because I'm so used to sewing. Sewing is one of my things, right? So it's helpful to me to wield a needle that's a little thinner for me. So I use a sharp in a lot of my projects, okay? So now I'm gonna attach this piece to the board and yeah, a big thank you to Gita for adding those links in. I'm trying to toss some of the links up on the on the screen when I see them. So as always, Gita, we couldn't do this without our without our Dane. So thank you. I'm going to connect this to the board. So you can see I'm working on a design tray here. I've got a clip here. Usually this is a scrap of of uh, kitchen twine, but my kitchen twine, <laughs> I used it at Christmas to wrap, this is true Kate story, to wrap our beef tenderloin, right? I had to tie it <laughs> and it's still in the kitchen. It hasn't made its way back out to my bead studio. I know, why not just get some kitchen twine for the kitchen, but why make it easy? Anyway, I'm gonna put my button here in this loop like this. So this is held on here. And then I'm going to put it on this end and also uh, clip it here. Okay. Uh, my mom is saying also sharps don't bend. Yeah. Like uh, beading needles. So I like that they're rigid. Um, I can just control them a little bit better. When I'm seed beading, sometimes I like a bouncier needle right? Um, but, um, but I use a sharp quite a bit. I'm distracted because my phone just buzzed and I got a severe weather alert, which I'm just going to ignore and keep beating with you. Uh, yeah, let's definitely have another tenderloin. I love it. All right. Uh, okay. So let me show you here. Infinity stitch. Infinity stitch. I start from the left since I'm right-handed. I'm starting from the left. Here's my L. And I'm going to go to the right. Okay. I'm going to start by showing you right here this section of the infinity stitch here. Can you see that? See how I've tapered this side down? This is next to the crimp. You get these crimps also and the button in your kit. This is the crimp we call transitions. It's from Tierra Cast. I love them, love them, love them. Um, and they really make great 
transitions in between your wrap bracelets. Here, you can see on this side how I've started. I've started it with the little shadows. And see with this knot how I used two. There was no real need to taper because the channel that I was um, going in and out, right? I'm, I'm laddering here, but I don't need to taper it down. Okay. Yeah, in California, no, I'm telling you, we are flooding, flooding like crazy. Um, it's, it's crazy uh, here. Um, it was, I was reading the Times, the New York Times the other day, and I see my hometown of Gilroy, California, right down the street from where I grew up, was completely flooded. It was crazy. Gilroy made the Times. So it's flooding here like crazy. It's just nuts, but we're bearing with it. Hopefully we'll all get through it because Lord knows we need the water. So, um, yeah, it's flood. It's our floods are in Cali are crazy right now. So I've started on the left. All right. I'm going to pick up my beads from the left on this. I should put them on the left then if that's what I'm doing. I'm going to start and whatever bead it is, right? If it's a single bead, if it's a large bead, whatever it is, but here are my two shadows, right? I'm going to go from the left. I'm going to go over the left hand cord and under the right hand cord. Okay. And pull through, pull it through, pull it through. And this first stitch, if you can set this first stitch up, correctly the rest of this is going to be a breeze so see what i've got here folks how i've i've coerced these two little beads in the trough right here right and i've come under the right hand now i'm going to grab my needle go over the right hand cord and back through those threads okay one and two okay see how i'm here all right let me get even tighter so you can see that super up close now i'm going to go through and this is for my first stitch slide this through now the first stitch on anything right is always wonky right it always just doesn't quite sit as well as you want it to. So here, when I come back towards the left, I'm gonna dip my needle under the left-hand strand, pull that thread tightly, see how that finally comes into play there, it kind of locks in. And I'm gonna repeat the process, but only on this first one, okay, like this dip the thread under the right hand leg, bring it up and around through these beads, send it through. If you have trouble, like see, look, I've got this business here. Get your awl and your awl, you can kind of pull the threads back see oh look there's a little kink a little knot that all will help you fix it get your all in there and then that will help you pull everything tight now i'm going to dip my needle under the left hand side pull it so the tension is even put on my next two. And from here on out, especially in this section, you're just going to ladder in this way. See how the thread comes right where you need it? I've gone underneath. Now my thread comes back up and over, send it through, dip it under, pull, and if you need to, give it your all.
Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay. Now you're going to continue that process. Now, how does this process come into play if you have beads that have larger holes? Here's our friend, the wood bicone. Now it's hard to see, you weren't looking at it, but in this wood bicone, it actually goes this way. I've gone over, through the hole, under, back through, and then I've gone through the hole again. So I've gone through the hole twice. That will secure this bicone. Take a look at the hole size, right? The hole size difference in these two beads is pretty big, right? So I like using that doubled KO for this side, for this bead, but if I'm adding this bead into that section, the KO might be a little thin for it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this one on. Let me zoom tight. Let's go ahead and put on the bicone coming from the left, going to the right, going under, tightening that through. And don't smush it. Smush is a technical term here, right? But just lay it in so it's nice and tight. Go back through and under, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna go through that hole again, okay? Through the hole, dip it under the right hand cord, back through and down, okay? This is a great, uh, this is a great question here. Uh, talk about the proper tension for infinity stitch. Uh, yeah, and I'm getting down to the wire here, so I'm going to go kind of faster here um, with what I'm showing you. But you'll be able to see, jo join me on my lives every Wednesday and Friday on Bead Shop at 10.30 a.m. Pacific. I go over so many tips and techniques. I'd love to have you there. So if we're, we get a little short here on this program, you'll be able to see some more there. Um, let's take a look at this whole thing and let's look at the tension. I'm gonna get rid of this for the moment. So we're back here with this section, okay? The saucers and the, and the, the um, shadows. What I what I want you to pay, pay special close attention to when you're infinity stitching is that the tension is even. And if you give that last little pull as you come back to the left, that last little pull on your thread kind of drops these beads all in line, if that makes sense. The other thing I want you to pay to pay special attention to here is that if you're working infinity stitch with two strands, as you give it that tug, sometimes you want to tug on the top thread and the bottom thread. So you don't have a little bubble of thread here on the other side, right? So that one thread is hugging the leather tightly and one thread is sticking out just a little, right? So you want to watch that when you're doing this. So that little tug, tuggy tug, okay? Here you can see as I, as I have gone to the end of this piece, right? I need to show you how to, how to finish this off. Um, you wanna add your thread. So let's pretend, where did that piece go? And I'm just gonna show you this fairly quickly, but you'll get the idea. So <clears throat> let's say that I've run out of thread and I'm here with this piece, right? And the secret to changing threads, folks, is changing your threads before your threads become too short, 
right? So if I have, I don't know, maybe five inches worth of thread left or so, I will weave the thread off and weave new thread in. I only have three beads on here, so this is going to be a little bit of a hack, but I'll show you. What I do to start with adding thread is I will cut my new length before I do anything with this one. And I'll walk it back a few rows and I'll start weaving it in like you do seed bead work, right? So let's say that I'm here on this one. Let's say I've got about this much seed bead work, you know, here. I would weave it back and I wouldn't go around the leather. I'd just go through the beads. I'd zip here, 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 making those right and left angle turns, right? So then I'd have my thread come out here. And then maybe I'd turn the corner and make a box like that. Just like with seed beads, clip it off. All right. And then I'd weave in my fresh thread. Weave, weave weave, weave, back to the starting point, okay? And pop my thread out right where my last bead on the right, on the left-hand side, if that makes sense. Another place where you can add and take away thread, what I did here was I added some thread. I was getting close to the end. I added a long piece of thread about right here. You can see it's kind of doubled up a little bit because I reinforced these last couple of stitches. Then I put on this transition. I slid my thread and needle through that and I just started my laddering here. And you can see I didn't have to, but I did reinforce this first bead. And these padres that I have here, they're a little uneven, right? But that's okay. It doesn't really matter. Your thread may or your leather may go in and out a bit, but I think that's part of the beauty of this design, right? Is that your, your beads have a little bit of an interesting, you know, shape difference. Then I came here, I did some more snake knot and I added, you can see there, if you look really closely, it's where I added some thread here on this section, I didn't go through doubled. I just went through my KO and the tension was pretty even. You can see I started here. I nestled a little single bead there because I needed a little bit of a, of a taper. And then I'll turn it sideways and you can see that the beads kind of stick out from the laddering. That's okay. It's going to sit just fine. All right. So I went kind of a design single bead, multiple bead design with small beads and the big beads. These small beads kind of gave this a balance, right? Kind of helped me with tension, putting these small, you could use an eight dot here too, but it helped me kind of pull everything in tight because it's a little loosey goosey, not super loosey goosey here, but I'm able to tighten my stitching because of these smaller beads here. Then I walk down, put another crimp on, and I still haven't crimped these. I will, I could get this with my pliers and crimp them down, but I just haven't yet. I don't know why I haven't, but I will. Then I uh, tapered up. So you can see I've got my single bead, two eight dots, three eight dots, and then those A dots continued on into the body of the necklace, right? Like this. And can you see how I made this motif using the matte uh, opaque bead, the matte opaque, matte opaque, and one of those tiny shadows in the middle, and then another. And then I had three plain rows, another motif, and so on. Okay. Then last but not least, I used those three millimeters. I picked out those three millimeter beads out of my mix, this little mix that I got in my kit, but you could use two different types of three millimeters, or this could be eight, whatever. But I thought this kind of punctuated the design nicely on the top, on the beginning and at the end. Okay. 
Here, I just finished with snake knots, snake knot, snake knot, snake knot, overhand knot. I didn't do any, no, I just uh, uh, wove my thread when I finished, wove it back through, wove it back through, wove it back through. Then I did my knots. Then instead of ending with a snake knot, I did that overhand, gave myself a little bit of space, measured my button, tied the knot, okay? Used a few of my large hold beads, put them on, tied the knot underneath, okay? In just the couple of moments I have left, uh, this is an excellent question, Melanie. Do I measure each section to a certain length? It's an excellent question, and I do not. What I do do when I am creating this piece, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the camera, is I try it on frequently, okay? So here's my first wrap. Let me see if I can get this around for you. And I'm gonna be turning this over very quickly, shortly. Um, Jill, our buddy Jill McKay is gonna be on really soon. Uh, we're gonna have about a 15 minute break or so in between and then Jill will be on. So I'm gonna literally wrap this up in the next few moments. See how I've wrapped here my wrist is six and a half inches. So my first wrap section is probably about seven. This one, I didn't want all of my pieces to all of my little transition areas to line up. So I make all of these a little bit of a different length. Let me just lay this out flat. So see this one. Here is six. Uh, let me get this on the screen here. I am scrambling. There's our coupon code right there for you. You can find everything over at Bead Shop. That's six. The second section is closer, about nine. Third section also a little bit longer, close to 10. Next section, whoops, I dropped my, my tape measure, goes a little uh, shorter at six. And then this end one, that's when you really wanna measure, okay? So you can lengthen, the beads are only about four inches. But here you can lengthen with more snake knots, fewer snake knots, and really this section will help you fine tune your length. So folks, I hope that uh, you can find a photo of the whole bracelet on the project page. Uh, so you can see the ingredients list, all of that, uh, that if you've missed any of that, um, you can find it all there. I don't want to take up any more time than my allotment. So I want to say thank you all so much for joining us today on uh, the Great Bead Extravaganza. You can use coupon code MIDWINTER20 on beadshop.com to save 20% all weekend long. You can also go to our uh, Feather River page over on beadshop.com and find all of our picks for the Feather River project. I'm sorry that kits sold out, uh, but join us uh, on our newsletter and you'll be the first to know about our new product drops. So cheers to you all. Another bracing little drink of my little coffee. Jill McKay is up next. You folks are in for a fantastic treat with this bead maven. You've got an expert. Well, You've got an experts all weekend, but I know you're really going to enjoy Jill. Thanks so much for your support. We wouldn't be here without you. See you all soon on my live broadcasts every Wednesday and Friday on the Bead Shop YouTube channel at 1030 a.m. Pacific time. See you later. <laughs>